Will this fit over my head? <laughs> okay, hang on. I have a trick we can try. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get this off. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nora, and this is also known as Nora Knits. This is my third podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and a huge thank you to everyone who has watched the first two episodes and who has liked and subscribed. Uh, it's been really, really exciting to watch, and more than anything, what I am loving is everyone's comments, and like just super, super nice things have been said, and I've really appreciated all of the, the tips and the help and just everything. I really am enjoying the community that we are building here. Uh, a little bit about me, I am coming to you from a small farm in Connecticut, and I've been knitting since January of this year, 2023. I've fallen so deep down the rabbit hole <laughs> and I'm just absolutely loving it. So I've been wanting to do this podcast for a little while and it just means so much that you are here enjoying this process with me. My philosophy for this channel is to be just a space where people can come to enjoy their love of knitting, but somewhere where we're not going to take ourselves too seriously, where we're not going to, you know, we could seriously love the craft without being too serious about it. So we make mistakes. We have to start and stop things and start them over again. And that's okay. And we're just here because we enjoy knitting and the many ways that the imperfections make something so perfectly handmade. So if that sounds like something that you can get on board with, please feel free to uh, subscribe and hang out with me again. I'll be posting on Saturdays. So let's go ahead and get started with today's episode uh, because we have quite a bit to talk about. So I'm going to start with what I'm wearing and I'm only going to touch on this a little bit. So this is the All Good Dress by Natanami Magdalena Parker. I have knit this in Hurtigarn Lanicat in 212 and that is a 50-50 superwash merino cotton blend. And I had this finished last week. However, I had not yet blocked it. So from last week to this week, I have blocked the project. I've worn it and I've taken some finished object photos that I'm so happy with how they turned out. And I just wanted to update on a couple of the things that I learned through blocking and after blocking so that we could put a big old bow on this project. So the first thing that I wanted to touch on, which is something that you all had helped me with, and I wanted to just update on that process, and that is the folded hems. And so the sleeve hems on this dress, as well as the finished hem at the bottom, are both done with a folded hem technique where you essentially knit to the length that you want that part of the dress to be. Then you add a purl row, which would be the row where everything's gonna fold under. You knit an additional, I think it's seven rows, and then stitch it to uh, the inside of the dress. And so when I had done the sleeves, I noticed that I was getting a little bit of a flare on the hem and so I decided to just try something different for the bottom hem of the dress. And I'm happy to report that after blocking, I'm really happy with the choice that I made. So for the bottom hem of the dress, I did decide after I had knit my pearl folded row that I would switch down to a 2.5 millimeter needle after I'd knit the whole dress with a three millimeter needle. And I was a little bit concerned before blocking that it was causing a little bit of a tug in and under the dress, which I thought would be better than the flaring out. But after blocking, I'm very happy with how straight it is. I will say that looking at the photos, I can tell that there's a slight sort of puffiness on the outer layer where it was folded 
which I'm assuming is just because my row gauge was slightly different after changing and dropping down my needle size, but I am not at all bothered by it. In fact, I really like the way that the hem looks. And I think compared to the sleeves, it definitely is a better finish for me personally. I'm still getting after blocking a little bit of a flare on the sleeves, not something that bothers me enough to go in at this point and change it. We'll have to see how it wears. And I just wanted to note that the flare that I'm getting isn't in fact where it was sewn down with the three needle bind off. It is just because there's an abundance of fabric there, so it wants to flare out. No big deal, but if that's something that bothers you, uh, I would switch down to a smaller needle size. I also, though, if you want to try some different techniques, I'm really happy that the first episode of the podcast has a comment section that is full of different recommendations from you guys on how to finish your folded hems. So there were so many different ways people suggested dropping down a needle size. Uh, what were some of the other things? Someone said to actually knit to your desired length, then go into the row that you would have been sewing your stitches to and pick up stitches there, knit down to match the length again, and then three needle bind off on the end. Brilliant. We'll have to try that at some point. Some people said the double knitting with an Italian bind off. If you go to the comment section of episode one of this podcast, you're going to see so many amazing recommendations for uh, a folded hem bind off or a folded hem hem. <laughs> So I'm so happy that we have that little treasure trove of everyone's wisdom. Thank you for sharing if you did. It's always welcome and I appreciate it. I'm happy with the technique that I chose and I just wanted to make sure that I reported that here today. I also am going to leave the the dimensions of the garment before and after blocking in the Ravelry page for this project, which I will also link the Ravelry page down below. And you will also see my body measurements. Overall, I'm super, super happy with the fit. Blocking this was a challenge. I mean, a, I, I wet blocked it, which might be regrettable. I just felt like it really needed that for all of the, the hem and, and just everything. It needed a good wet block. Plus this has been with me everywhere. So it needed a good wash. So it's just that it turned into this stopping wet. It was heavy. <laughs> and so trying not to stretch it and pull it and hang it while you're laying it out flat was a nightmare. I got it as close as I could to flat and straight and all of the things, but I do think that it could benefit on the hems and, and even in the, in the body, just a quick little steam block on top of that. I didn't do that before the finished object photos, but I think it could benefit from that. So just note that if you're going to knit something with such a, a heavy, but very fine fabric, blocking is going to need a little extra care. So I wanted to make that note. The other thing that I wanted to mention, and I hadn't yet, was the neckline of this dress. In the pattern, she is so clear on how to pick up. You do pick up for this neckline, and you knit your ribbing, and there's an Italian bind off to finish. I love the way that it gives almost a slight like trapezoid shape to the neckline. It's not perfectly round. The only thing is I think that after wearing it, it's going to stretch out a little bit. And I almost just wish that it was, I mean, right now I'm sitting, but I think in the finished object photos, you could see that it, it does hang just a, a touch lower, like a quarter of an inch lower than maybe where I would want it. So maybe I could put an elastic in the neckline. And if I feel like it it gets to that point, then I, I will, and I'll, I'll let you know. I'll keep the Ravelry page updated with those sorts of things. But for now, the fit, I'm so happy with the fabric. I'm so happy with the yarn, thrilled, everything. I love it. The fit is amazing. I'm going to see how I feel about the length because that did obviously stretch out after blocking, after wearing. Um, but my thought was I'd rather it be too long than too short. So certainly not anytime soon, but after 
if after a little bit I feel like the length just became too long with stretching, I will undo the hem and bring it up. But for now, I am loving the fit. I'm wearing it. It's so comfy. It's like a big nightgown. It's just really cozy and I love it. So that was my update on my all good dress and things are all good with the all good dress. I'm excited about it. I'm happy it's done. I'm loving it. And hopefully I will have some styling videos on how I plan to style this dress out soon. So that is that for the all good dress for the finished objects, yay. Okay, so next I'd like to move on to my whips which I will start with my Core Chavin cardigan. The pattern is by Tonya, Tanya, Tanya Hodney. And I am knitting the size extra large. I did not gauge swatch for this project. However, I, not that I'm regretting it, but I think I probably could have had a bit more of a smooth experience if I did, but no big deal. I'm really loving the project so far. Okay, so I have my Course have in cardigan here, and I am knitting this with Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color Oatmeal, and I am using US 8 five millimeter needles for this. Uh, before I go too much in depth about how this is going, I wanted to talk about the yarn because another way you guys have been so helpful in the comments is letting me know, so I had mentioned that this yarn has a musty scent to it. And I assumed that that was something that came from the Amazon warehouse or just through the Amazon shipping process, who knows, um, because I did order this yarn off of Amazon. And I had a lot of people saying that it is possible that this musty scent is actually that sheepy scent. So I, I always wondered what people were talking about when they said, it smells sheepy. I love the sheepy scent. I'd never picked up on that before. So I'm going to go on a mission <laughs> soon and go yarn sniffing because I want to know if this is the sheepy scent that people love so much or is this genuinely just some musty old <laughs> yarn from Amazon? I'll note that in certain circumstances, the scent isn't actually that bad. In fact, this is the second ball and I think I'm getting, you know, I'm getting closer to the center and it's not that bad here. But in certain spots, I could pull this out of the bag and there's an overwhelming musty scent. So maybe it's a little bit of both. I have to go yarn sniffing. <laughs> so... Once I've gone on a yarn sniffing hunt, I will report back what I think about the sheepy scent. I'm curious to know though, are you someone who loves the sheepy scent? Do you love that woolly wool smell or are you turned off by it? Because I know that the, the views are mixed. So let me know down below whether or not you are that sheepy smell lover or if it totally puts you off. And I will get back to you on that once I've decided how I feel about it. If it's based off of how this is smelling right now, I don't think I love it, but who knows? Who knows? So that's that on the yarn. As far as this pattern goes, it is a bottom up cardigan. And I believe last week I was just about, yes, I was just about to split for the sleeves. And I wanted to know, the pattern recommends that you knit 12 of these basket rows for my size, and I'm knitting the extra large, before you split for the sleeves. I knew I was going to cut that a little bit short, but actually, after filming myself holding this up to my body last week, I felt like I was really at a good point. I almost feel like I could have gone one basket row less, but I decided right then and there to split for the sleeves. So I split for sleeves after nine basket rows instead of 12. And after that, the pattern suggests that you move on to your front panels. And it is a V-neck cardigan. So you're working bottom up. And as you work your way 
up, you are casting off your stitches on the neckline to create that V-neck. So both of my front panels are done, which was my goal for this week, and I am about halfway through the back panel, which is just continuing with the basket weave all the way up until you meet the shoulders, at which point there will be a three needle bind off. So I'm hoping to get that back panel done. In the next couple of days, I would love to be working on a sleeve by next week. I did want to mention, someone had asked in the comments if the wrong side of the fabric continued the basket weave pattern. And it's interesting because I have actually looked at this wrong side of the fabric and felt like it's a really interesting texture within itself. And you almost could wear it either way depending on the texture that you're looking for. So I mentioned that the basket weave is a very simple texture. It's made up of knits, pearls, slip slip knits, knit two togethers, and yarn overs. And the the nature of the arrangement of it does not leave the the wrong side with the basket weave fabric but rather a different texture entirely and one that i think could be really pretty if you wanted to use this as sort of a reversible if you wanted to use this as sort of a reversible sweater so if you were curious to know what the wrong side of the fabric looked like, that is what it is. My hope is to finish the back panel in just the next couple of days and at least be started on the sleeve, one of the sleeves, by the time I get to next week's video. However, after that, it is time to move on to the button band. And the button band in the pattern calls for a ribbed button band, which I did do in my first crochet and cardigan that I made. So once the cardigan is complete, you go in and pick up stitches for the button band and you knit a ribbed button bound, a ribbed button band, a ribbed button band <laughs> all the way around. For this cardigan, however, because I'm going for something a little bit more staple, a little bit more sleek, with the color of this, I, I want something that has a, a little bit more of a refined look to it, a little bit less texture. I would like to try and adapt the button band to do a double knit button band. So I am curious to know if you're someone who has done this on a cardigan before, swapped out a ribbed button band for a double knit button band, is there a pattern that you followed? Is there a video that you followed? Is there any advice that you have, any tips? I would be really interested to know if you've done it before, what you recommend for how to approach uh, adapting the pattern from a ribbed button band to a double knit button band, because that will be the next step after the sleeves. So please share with me what you would advise to do for a double knit button band. Uh, other than that, I'm super happy with where this is at. I do have my, my front panels on the try it on tubing, which I purchased a big roll of this from Amazon and I'll see if I can remember to link it down below. I have found that it works best with chunkier yarn on something like my dress with the fingering weight yarn. It was a little bit more difficult to slide the stitches onto and off of the, the cord, but definitely still easier than other methods that I've tried. And I think that's just because this particular tubing has more of a matte finish to it and it's less shiny, so it's less slippery, which is good and bad for different reasons. In this situation, it's great because although I have tied off my front panel, I don't think I would actually need to. They, the, the stitches don't really want to slide off of this try it on tubing in particular. So that is where we are at. We have two front panels and let's see, actually, we have done one, two, three, four of the basket weaves in the back, and I believe that I am looking for a total of 10. So not quite halfway there, but hopefully we'll be able to get the back panel done in the next few days. 
Super simple update on this one. I didn't work on it a ton after I got those front panels done. My attention shifted. So once I finished the front panels on my Korshavin cardigan, I decided it was time to embark on my ranunculus. This is my first ranunculus, and of course, everyone has heard the incredible things that people have to say about this pattern, and I am typically the kind of person who says, if everyone else is doing it, I'm going to go in the complete opposite direction. However, after purchasing this yarn, which is the Malabrigo Susuro in the color Frank Ochre, I felt like it was the perfect yarn to knit this pattern in. So I have now, <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit with my ranunculus. I have started this project three times. It is entirely my own fault. There's been a few things there's been a few things that have led to my lack of success with this ranunculus pattern. And so I, I wanted to share my experience. For starters, I am knitting this on US 7 needles, 4.5 millimeters. And I am using US 7 or 4.5 millimeter needles to knit this project when the pattern calls for US 10 needles. And I went over my gauge swatch in episode two. So if you're curious about that, you can go check that out there. But I was really torn on how I wanted to approach this project. I have not yet had to adapt a project by knitting off gauge and changing sizes and all of those things. So it was a little bit, it was a little bit daunting going into it. But I thought so many people, 20,000 20, people on Ravelry <laughs> have knit this pattern. So it, it'll be fine. And everyone touts how you can change the gauge and do different sizes. And all of these incredible things about this pattern. So I wasn't too worried going into it, but I was a little bit apprehensive about it. So what I decided to do on take one of this ranunculus pattern was they give you options for, in the pattern, they give you options for a wider neckline and a smaller neckline. And you begin the pattern by knitting the ribbing, which I wanted to note too, this is the first time since the first sweater that I knit that the neckline has actually been integrated into the pattern and you don't have to go back and pick up stitches. So I was pretty excited about that. It was kind of a relief that once you get through it, you're done. So you, you start by knitting the ribbing on the neckline and depending on whether you want to knit the smaller neckline or the wider neckline, that will depend how many stitches you cast on. Once you complete the ribbing, you increase and begin the section of German short rows in the yoke. So because I was working with a smaller gauge, I thought it would be smart to cast on the amount of stitches that you are supposed to increase to. So I casted on 90 stitches. And this was my first time using a crochet cast on, which I found very simple. Once I got the hang of it, I do come from crochet. So it's possible that that made it a little bit easier for me, but I enjoyed the crochet cast on. That was, that was pretty simple for me once I got the hang of it. And so I cast on 90 stitches. <laughs> and so I knit to the end of section three in the pattern. So the pattern is broken up into different sections, which is very helpful, but it also can be very overwhelming when you get the pattern just to see the amount of 
sections and instructions and options and I think it's 15 pages, the whole pattern. So thorough pattern, but it's a little bit overwhelming when you first look at it. You're like, oh, okay, this seems like a lot. And it's not, it's just very thorough. So I knit through to the end of section three, which included all of the German short rows. There are German short rows in the back, and that's what you start with, and then you move to the front. And they're very clear in the pattern on knitting X amount of stitches, knitting your German short row, knitting this many stitches, slip the marker, knit this many stitches. It's very clear. And I got to the end of section three and I had six stitches left. So I was like, what did I do wrong? I must have messed up the German short rows. I don't have a ton of experience with the German short rows. So I thought these instructions are so thorough. I must have messed something up. Maybe I missed a section. So I tore back to the end of the ribbing and I started section three over again. I knit the German short rows in the back, I knit the German short rows in the front, and I got to the end of section three, and I had six stitches left on the needles. And I thought, what the heck is going on? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know how to knit. I was I was so confused. I did not understand. I was getting frustrated with the pattern. I was getting frustrated with myself. So I went in and I count, I counted all of the stitches that I had and I had 96 stitches. Why, why do I have 96 stitches? So I thought, all right, let me go back and let me see where I put in these additional six stitches. <laughs> and I went back to my cast on edge and I counted the stitches and guess how many I had? 96 stitches. <laughs> I just cast on 96. I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know how six stitches wound up. I have no idea what the heck happened. And lesson learned, everyone take note. I know you don't want to. After you've cast on, just count, just count one more time. Just count one more time. How many stitches? It's gonna save you in the, in, in the long run. I had 90 six stitches when I thought I had 90 the whole time. And I'm like, the German short rows aren't adding up. This isn't working. This pattern's stupid. Ah, this is so annoying. <laughs> it was me. It was me the whole time. I just, I just cast on 96 stitches. <laughs> so at that point, I tore the whole thing out. Start over. So now we're on to take three. At this point, I, I should mention too, this was this past week was my busiest week, uh, work week. And I didn't have quite enough brain space to dedicate to to something new. And I should have known better. But I really was excited to get my ranunculus started. So I started thinking, you know what, this was my sign that from the beginning, I should have gone in through the pattern instructions and used my ratio of my gauge to their gauge, changed all of the numbers, and knit, do this the right way, do this the right way, what I should have done all along. So I spent a full day doing math. I was doing math everywhere in my notebook in the car, in between clients. <laughs> this is math, cross multiplication, ratios, um, rewriting the pattern with new numbers. And I'm like, this is gonna take forever. There's 15 pages in this pattern. I think psychologically, I, I was afraid to start and mess up again. And so I was putting it off by doing all of this math unnecessarily. And then someone commented on my second podcast and said they were so looking forward to seeing the ranunculus. And they said, don't overthink it. Because I had mentioned 
not knowing if I should map it out, if I should just go in with the wrong gauge. You know, I didn't know how to approach it. And this person commented and said, don't overthink it. It's a forgiving pattern. I've knit the size three. I've knit the size 10. I have used the na- the needle size that my yarn recommended, and it's always worked out. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> I'm over here in a sea of math equations like, but if I don't solve for X, I'll never knit a ranunculus. And I almost think that this was my first time experiencing with having an audience. You know, you've you've cut vegetables a hundred times in your life. But as soon as your mother is watching you cut vegetables, you turn into Kendall Jenner and you don't know how to use your knife anymore. And you're like, I definitely know what I'm doing. I swear I do this all the time, but someone's watching. So it all, you panic. I think I've experienced that virtually where suddenly people were invested in my ranunculus. And I was like, I don't even know how to knit anymore. <laughs> and I cast on 96 stitches instead of 90. And then I tried to do a lot of math to put off actually doing the sweater. So I quit the math. So thank you to whoever said don't overthink it. Unless this doesn't work, then then don't. No, thank you. <laughs> anyway, then I went in and I started this project a third time. And I should note too, at this point, the yarn that I'm using, the Malabrigo Susuro, this yarn is 50% silk, 25% merino wool, 25% linen, and it's a single ply. And so we knit her, we ripped her out. We knit her, we ripped her out. We knit her, we ripped her out. She was not interested in being knit anymore. But I, I knit with it anyway. And on the wooden needles and just all of that, just all of that overworking the yarn, it was getting really sad. So I struggled a little bit, but I decided third time's a charm. I was going to persevere. I really didn't want to crack into a new skein of it because I only have so much of it. And so I, I kept knitting with the same yarn, but it's very fuzzy and it was really splitty by that time. So anyway, I knit it the third time, cast on the amount of stitches recommended in the pattern. I went for the smaller neckline, did the crochet tubular cast on. At this point, I'm a champ. I'm a pro at that. That went smoothly. <laughs> okay, so I made it through section two. I made it through section three. If you've never knit the ranunculus before, it's a great pattern. There's a lot of information, but it's overwhelming. And just because everyone says it's such a great pattern and I want to knit three of them and I want to only knit ranunculus for the rest of my life doesn't mean that it's mindless and that it's just easy peasy, don't have to pay attention. You're reading the pattern. And there's links in the pattern for video tutorials. And this is something that Natonomy, Magdalena Parker, in her patterns, she'll say, at this point, do the Italian bind off. And there will be a link right there to her showing you how to do an Italian bind off. In the ranunculus pattern, it'll say, at this point, we're going to do this loop stitch and see the video list on the Ravelry page for instructions on how to do this loop stitch. And you click the link and it takes you to the Ravelry page where you now have to sort out what video instruction tutorial you're looking for. So... Anytime I'm not getting a direct point A A to point B link, 
or or instruction or anything, I always have a doubt that, did I find the right one? Am I doing the right thing? And so far, my only qualm with that really is in section three. That's where you're starting to knit these wrap stitches. And they're knit, this wrap or loop stitch is knit at different points in the pattern with different intervals of stitches. And the video tutorial for this stitch is not for the interval of stitches that first presents itself in the pattern. So it'll say something like knit one stitch, insert your needle between the second and third stitch, pull up the loop, and you would expect that the video that you're watching is showing you how to do that. However, there's other places in the pattern where you're inserting your needle between the fourth and fifth stitch or the third and fourth, whatever the numbers are, it's not showing you the technique the first way it's presented in the pattern. And I hope that that makes sense because my point is, since mentioning I was going to knit this ranunculus, I've had people say that they've never knit one and they want to knit one with me, which please, let's do this together. I want to note that so that you don't make the same mistake that I did where <clears throat> this was a new stitch. I went in and followed the video tutorial blindly, not realizing that it wasn't showing me the instruction, the way it was written. So just pause, read the instructions, watch the video, and figure out how the video tutorial applies to the specific instruction that you're following. Because there is not a different one then for the next part in the pattern where it shows the same stitch again. So that, that threw me for a loop a little bit, that loop stitch. <laughs> early for a loop, but I figured it out. I thought, <laughs> shoot, I really thought it did. I made it past that point. I got to the next loop stitch. Then you have this fun little ridge row. That was, that was all good and fine. And at this point, I, I had sat in silence all day, just focusing on this pattern. Again, it'd been a busy week. Brain was not ready for reading a pattern, but I didn't have any stockinette in the round. So it was like, well, what the heck else was I going to do? At this point, I thought, okay, good, good, good. I made it through the really tricky stuff. Let me throw on something in the background. Let me watch a knitting podcast. And so I turned on well-loved knits and it was Bethany and she's wearing her ranunculus. And I thought, oh, let me see where I'm at in the pattern versus, you know, where compared to what hers looks like on the on the TV. And I'm looking at hers. I'm looking at mine. Those don't look the same. <laughs> Needless to say, I did that loop wrap stitch wrong, probably because I was following the video. Something went wrong. I did it right the second time it appears in the pattern, I think, but definitely not the first time. And at first I was like, that's, I'm not even redoing it. It's so stupid. Why would I go back? I'm not tearing this out again. But I realized after looking at it, that's what, that's one of the pieces in the texture on the yoke that I liked the most. <laughs> so I'm going to start over again. I'm a big girl <laughs> and I'm going to be responsible and do the pattern the justice that it deserves. I don't want to I don't want to seem like such a a Debbie Downer on this ranunculus pattern. It's not the pattern's fault. It's my fault. I should have known better than to cast on a project on a week when my workload was at its peak. Because I, I didn't have the mental space to, to get through this pattern. Now that I've knit the same thing four times, I assume the fifth time is going to go swimmingly. <laughs> but 
for the sake of podcasting, I wanted to come on here and show my progress. And I also thought we could take advantage of this opportunity to try on what I have knit up to make sure that following the stitch count with my gauge that's completely off is even going to fit over my head. So nothing is lost. Um, this isn't a waste. I'm learning something along the way. And for the next one that I restart, I'm going to crack into a new ball of yarn and try to avoid having to use this yarn again. But if I do, I'm going to try to leave it for the very end so that I can use hopefully as little of this overworked yarn as possible. I also at this point want to welcome any advice in the comments on these loop stitches, the wrap stitches in the yoke. If you have any advice on just um, how to make them look as beautiful as they do in the sample photos, please let me know. Um, I, I and, and anyone else who's going to knit this ridiculous with me who's never done it before. And I also wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that it is so okay to mess up. It's so okay. Just because there are 20,000 people out there who have knit this pattern and have said it was the greatest thing they've ever done, easy peasy, got it done in two days, doesn't mean that that has to be your experience. I'm also allowed to not love the ranunculus pattern. That's, that's okay for me. As of right now, I'm not seeing why everyone says it's such an enjoyable knit. That doesn't mean that I'm not gonna get to that point, but I haven't seen anyone point out these faults in the pattern. They're not faults in the pattern. It's just understanding and reading the pattern and, and the style of the pattern. For some people, it's going to work. And for some people, it's not the same way that anyone's pattern is going to be that way. Just because this pattern has 20,000 projects on Ravelry doesn't mean that it has to be the project for you. It is so okay. So I'm here for the people who need to hear that about this pattern, about any pattern. And I'm also here to say, it's okay to start over. It's okay to go back and fix the mistakes. It's okay to make the mistakes. Let's do it. Can you hear her drinking water? Hydrate, hydration break. So, so far those are my notes on the ranunculus pattern. At this point, I'm gonna put this onto some try it on tubing and let's try on the yoke and see how it's fitting so far. I also thought that I would give you the satisfaction of removing the waste yarn from the crochet cast on. So uh, let's see, let's try this thing on. Um, I, I did think about, though I want the look of this smaller neckline for my ranunculus, maybe it would have been wise to cast on for the wider neckline since my gauge is off. Um, but again, that's kind of why we're going to try it on right now so that we can see when I recast this on, should I just start with the wider neckline uh, and will that just give me the look I'm going for instead. So will this fit over my head? Oh gosh, oh my gosh, I don't think it will. <laughs> Okay, hang on. I have a trick we can try. Let's see. Okay, there's this... <laughs> there's this trick that you learn if you go to cosmetology school, probably. I'm sure other people use it too, but... If you have a more snug neckline and your makeup is already done, or if you just want to protect, if you have a white uh, sweater, especially something that's more difficult to clean, get yourself a silk scarf and you're going to put that <laughs> over your head and then put the sweater on on top. That way your makeup doesn't transfer onto the sweater and you also don't mess up your makeup with the sweater. So let's see if this works. <laughs> this is hysterical. Okay. I feel like I could get this stuck on my head. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> timer. I set a timer so I wouldn't take too long doing this. I'm really like, I'm so close. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. 
Oh my gosh, if someone came to the window right now and saw me. Okay. <laughs> Did I? come up closer. This is the issue. I really like how this neckline is. Like that's kind of where I wanted it, but I'm not going through all of that work to put it on. So maybe I will cast on with a few more stitches than I did. Uh, <laughs> Cause I followed the pattern exactly for the smaller neck cast on. And so maybe I will split the difference between that and the number that you increase to so that I could just have a little bit more wiggle room without it really stretching out because I like the neckline. Okay, obviously, so these are these stitches that I was talking about that I did the wraps wrong. So this is the first time you see the loop or the wrap stitch. And I know that that is not correct just from looking at the pattern and then i did that loop or wrap stitch again down here and i thought okay let me leave a good um i didn't snug it up at all but i'm wondering if i should snug it up so that you get more of that cinched look that you see in the pattern but okay i'm excited because i think that this while it's wrong, is looking nice. You can see that I just got into this first eyelet row, but I am really happy with how that is going to look. So that's exciting. Uh, oh my god, look how pretty it is. Okay, very exciting. So it's a good thing that we're doing this. I'm going to be so excited today to cast this on again with a new ball of yarn, and I will note that <laughs> <laughs> that with the neckline. It's a little too small. So good to know. Let's see if we could get this off now. I'm gonna... <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> it's like a bad magic trick. All right. So now I'm gonna do this kind of in reverse where I'm gonna try and tuck all the scarf underneath the neckline my hair and everything. Okay. And let's see. Okay, now I'm gonna kinda... <laughs> wow, okay. So, those are, that's, that's where I'm at with the <laughs> ranunculus. Uh, I've got plans. I've got some tweaks I'm gonna make, and here is hoping that for the next episode, I am even beyond this point, and successfully, hopefully, this time. I think what I've learned this week is that I need a stock in it in the round project. When I am craving something to knit, and it's my busy time of the year. I just can't be reading such intricate pattern instructions. And I know that once I get past the yoke, this is gonna be so simple. But this was just not the week to, to cast this on. So hopefully this week will be a little bit different. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I said, if you have any advice, on the ranunculus pattern, on those special stitches that you do have in the yoke, please leave them down below. I think that myself and anyone else who's interested in embarking on the ranunculus journey with me would appreciate it so much. So that is where we are at with the ranunculus. Oh my goodness. The internet is gonna be a wild place. <laughs> So that is all I have in the way of whips this week. Uh, other than that, I feel like this is already going to be a long one. So 
Should I mention? I mean, I have an acquisition. If you are interested, you can follow me at aka Nora Knits on Instagram. And I will do my best moving forward to update the stories there. I love to go thrifting for yarn. I love to get yarn for a good bargain. And thrift stores are where I have purchased the majority of the stash that I have. And I will try to share some of my thrifting yarn experience on Instagram. So I did a little bit of that this week when I was in some thrift stores and I wound up making one purchase, which was this cone of yarn and the other cones that it was near. I found like six or seven cones of yarn that day and they all had the information on a sticker on the inside of the cone, but this one and one other did not. And I couldn't tell while I was there what material this was. The other yarns that were there were mostly poly blend materials. So I didn't pick any of those up just because that's not what I prefer to work with. And this one I only picked up because it, it didn't say what it was. And I was curious enough by the feel and the look of it as to whether or not it was wool. However, I did the burn test where you burn a piece of the yarn and if it melts rather than chars and, and burns, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if you, if it melts, then it's a synthetic fiber. And this one did a little bit of both. I got a little bit of a burn and a little bit of a melt. So I am assuming that there is both synthetic and natural fibers in here. Um, so I'm not sure what I'll make out of this. It, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty rustic. And so I'm not, I'm not so sure what it'll turn into, but this cone of yarn I picked up for $2.99. And so still with the cone on it, it's coming in at 436 grams. So I'm not sure what this will turn into, but I just really enjoyed the colors of it. Let me give you a close up. The, the yarn has a, a sort of tweedy texture to it, which I liked the different flecks of red and yellow and blue. And it looks like all of that is on a bluish gray base. It's a two ply yarn. It is probably clocking in around a DK weight. Um, so yeah, not sure what that'll turn into. If you have any suggestions for synthetic fiber around 400 grams of yarn, what I should do with that please let me know. It's also okay if nothing happens to it for a little while. It was $2.99 for that cone and I just couldn't pass it up out of curiosity. So that was my acquisition this week. Um, plans for this week are going to be to recast on this ranunculus. Let's get this thing going. I, like I said, would love to get to Aladdin vest state at the very least in my Korshavn cardigan. So those are the plans for this week as far as video plans are, uh, as far as video plans go. I've already mentioned that I've had some ideas. I really wanna get a styling video out for this all good dress. I have a few pattern roundups I wanna talk about as well as my fall knitting plans. So nothing is concrete. I don't know how much of that I'll be able to get in. You know, there's only so much time in the day, but those are things I'd be so excited to share with you. And if there's anything else that you guys want to see from me, definitely please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for sticking around with me for another video. And again, a huge thank you to everyone. Oh, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> um, at the time of filming the last podcast, the second podcast, I had 50 subscribers and I thought that was incredible. I was blown away that anyone would want to sit and watch me in my living room with my sidekick OC talking about my knitting adventures. And since then, 
the subscriber count has gone just up to over 700 and the comments have been so supportive and overwhelmingly positive and nice. And that is so much more than I ever could have hoped for with starting this channel. So thank you for hanging out with me and enjoying this content and for your kind and positive words. Thank you so much. I I just want to exaggerate that I am grateful to be building a community of like-minded people. Like I said, all of the imperfections are what make something so perfectly handmade. And if you feel like you can live by that philosophy with me, then I would love to have you join me on this knitting journey. So please let me know that you liked this video by subscribing, by liking this video, and definitely keep in touch with me down in the comments. I'm going to do my best to respond to as many as I can, and I will always read and like the comment, uh, so long as it is something nice that you have said. Uh, anyway, just had to make sure I said that because I don't want that to be something that I just brush off. I genuinely and sincerely have been so excited seeing this community come together. So thank you. Uh, all that being said, that is all I have for this podcast episode. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. Big ol' thanks for watching. And that is going to be it this week. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>